Good evening, everyone, and welcome. And thank you very much for joining us. For those who don't know me, I'm Rachel Chan, a family law barrister at 42 Bedford Row. And I'm delighted to be joined tonight by um, with Jerry Wetherill and Claire Chamberlain, both independent social workers. Jerry is an extremely experienced and well-known social work ex uh, expert witness with over 30 years experience. And Claire Chamberlain is extremely experienced social work um, social worker with over 12 years experience and has been recognised by Ofsted with as being consistently raising the bar in pursuit of high quality outcomes for children and both have worked together to develop the QBUS parenting assessment tool, a parenting assessment taking the family courts by storm. So the purpose of tonight is to look at QBAS, how it became and what it is why is it different from other parenting assessments, timescales and fees, and then we'll take questions at the end. And questions can be asked by typing in the chat box at the end. And as always, the webinar will be available on our Chamber's YouTube channel and a leaflet for solicitors for any Part 25 applications. Um, and the PowerPoint slides will be available on request um, uh, the email for that will be at the end of presentation to keep you all listening until the very end. So over to Jerry. Hi, thank you. And thank you to all of you for your interest in QBAS uh, parenting assessment. And some more thanks, if I may, to every parent and every guardian, every legal professional who's contributed to the development of QBAS. This input has been really invaluable to us and it's been an essential part of how QBAS evolved. More of that in a moment. For those of you with no experience of QBAS yet, and those of you whose professional curiosity has led you here this evening, our aim is to provide you with a very quick overview to explain why QBAS is well recognised as a key requirement to assist more effective and timely planning for children. So briefly, how QBAS came about and evolved into the really robust and thorough inclusive assessment it is now, and how it meets the demands of parenting assessments for the 2020s and beyond. QBUS does this not just in cases where cognitive profiles demand a different approach, but QBUS does this for all matters with every parent and at any stage of local authority involvement. Now, obviously we'll answer your questions um, in due course, but let's first think about how QBUS came about. So, Imagine for a moment being a social worker, um, assessing very many contrasting uh, situations with families in complex and highly distressing circumstances. Assessing families in situations which go way beyond the need for basic care assessments and way beyond just needing to know what parents know. All parents have sharply contrasting needs too, maybe some including issues of PTSD, autistic spectrum disorders and mental health issues, dependency issues, um, some very, very complex relationships. Some of the parents are requiring additional cognitive support and some have no such needs. But whatever their difference is, they are all quite unique and need to be assessed as such. So social workers really did deserve better tools and so did the families deserve for them to have better, so, uh, better tools. If you imagine a social worker needing to work within these circumstances, um, but having to apply a one size fits all approach and just do what they can with the limited and outdated approaches they have, you really can't achieve your best assessments under those circumstances. 
And as a legal professional, I don't doubt you find it ever more concerning that you're having to rely on that evidence to assist the court. Certainly for the families involved, nothing could be more important than the outcome of the social worker's involvement and your involvement. Yet the social worker's only been equipped with approaches and tools that either just don't fit or they merely scratch the surface. For so long, as a profession committed to the best outcomes for children, we've had to collectively tolerate the use of these outdated and severely limited, frankly, quite inadequate assessment tools. When the responsibilities we're charged with are potentially the most important decisions involving children and their families. So as social workers and expert witnesses having encountered these limitations over such a long time and having to compensate massively for the shortcomings in terms of professional knowledge and skills and engagement techniques, Claire and I determined it was absolutely time for change and no more forcing square pegs into round holes for assessment. QFAS was finally launched in mid-2021 after several years in development and full testing, and of course, amidst a global pandemic. Only I would do that. <laughs> so, Jerry, what does QBAS do differently? So, QBAS does pretty much everything differently. We made QBAS so that it's really relevant and relatable for families. We made it go further than any other models so that it would address all the contemporary issues for children and their parents. We made a really complex and hugely stressful process easy to relate to for families. We made the whole process more meaningful. It's an, it's an assessment process they can really engage in fully and contribute to in lots of new ways and potentially grow through it's a really stark contrast. So QBAS makes it far easier for social workers to produce really comprehensive and fully robust assessments. And QBAS uses a range of uh, flexible approaches um, and lots of different facilitation tools to suit every situation. QBAS is an assessment that goes far further with width and breadth and depth to assess fairly, fully, and inclusively. We don't just assess parenting capacity, we assess the parent's potential for change. So QBAS is very different. It's an assessment that readily adapts for everyone and including parents with additional learning needs and couples whose cognitive profiles contrast. QBAS very importantly, QBAS doesn't patronise or expect every parent to relate to the same approaches. The assessor uses a really wide range of options from the built-in tools uh, library um, and has options to suit every parent and to cover a vastly wider range of issues that face parents. QBAS really is an assessment that leaves nothing relevant out because for a parenting assessment to be of full value for the children, the family, the local authority and the court, it must consist of more than just information regarding what a parent knows and what a parent does or doesn't do. We all understand that other things have a huge influence on how a parent behaves and how well they can protect and nurture their children and whether they can develop. So how does it go further? Well, QBAS goes further in so many ways. QBAS creatively and powerfully explores all the relevant issues, the usual things, such as the impact of their past experiences and how they've adapted, what coping strategies they've developed. It explores their beliefs and their cultural contrasts, um, looks at their genuine insights into their children's needs, 
the nature and the stability of their relationships. Also, whether there are issues of addiction and dependency and whether and how their individual needs impact on their parenting, whether and how mental ill health and general stability issues impact. And QBAS looks at the nature and the quality of insightful support available. But critically, QBAS goes much, much further to establish evidence of attitudes and insights, honesty, integrity, receptivity to advice and guidance and support, genuine motivation and the potential to change, also explores and deals with unresolved obstacles to safer care. So there are so many additional benefits to a QBAS assessment because it goes so much further. We used our four plus decades worth of combined social work expertise to um, assist us to develop QBAS. We also use some up to the minute bespoke software to help us, nothing out of date or limited, a wide range of bespoke facilitation techniques and unique tools that we've developed and also other uh, assessment tools that we know work really well. And we combined all these things with our passion for our task to make sure that every assessment is a dynamic and adaptable facilitative process in which every parent can engage and really fully contribute. So how is QBAS approached? So QBAS consists of five, um, six facets, sorry, six facets of social work analysis using adapted approaches to suit every parent's cognitive profile. So using these six facets, we explore each one in turn. The first two facets or parts of the QBAS assessment relate entirely to preparation. It's absolutely key that that is undertaken really fully and um, professionally. The assessor uses the software to direct the focus upon most important considerations for in-depth assessment and those in which the issues present the most significant risks to the child. So facet one relates to the parents presenting issues where additional or contrasting learning needs are identified for one or both parents. QBAS employs specially adapted questions and prompts the assessor to select the most appropriate facilitation tools from its wide range of built-in options. These include really relatable and up-to-date visual clue, uh, cues for parents, audio, video excerpts, and interactive facilitation games. Facet two relates to the child's lived experiences in the parent's care and their resulting needs now and in the future. Where the children's needs contrast, QBAS software provides fully for this also. Then in facet three, QBAS fully explores each parent's insights to their children's needs and their knowledge in principle. Parents tell us QBAS makes sense to them also that they can understand the questions and the activities involved in their assessments. They often tell us they're far clearer about what their children need and the changes they need to make. They can often evidence more easily what they need to know and what they understand and better evidence what they recognise gets in the way of their children's safety. Parents often develop improved insights through the process of facets three and four. And if parents are capable of making changes, we often see this during the process of assessment. So all of Cubis's approaches are firmly geared to facilitate and encourage meaningful engagement and establish evidence to, to aid analysis of all the key considerations. QBAS incorporates colour-coded risk criteria and key prompts to support the social worker to analyse across all aspects of care 
assessed. In facet four, having established what the parent knows and their insight to their children's basic needs, QBAS moves on powerfully to other really critical issues potentially influencing their care and their capacity to change. So throughout facets three and four, facilitation approaches are adapted to recognize cognitive contrasts. And the adaptations for parents with additional cognitive needs do not patronize any parent or compromise on the depth of exploration, evidence gathering or professional analysis. Now, as you can imagine, measuring insights, attitudes and adaptations, honesty and integrity and motivation are clearly additional approaches and they require really skillful facilitation and exploration. More so than any one size fits all approach allows. So QBAS training in application of these powerful facilitation techniques provides social, social workers with the means to address these issues very thoroughly, but sensitively. Facet five is the detailed report for the court. The comprehensive template is generated by the software. It's worth noting that the report format ensures every relevant issue is given full consideration. So you'll be pleased to know that there's no need for extensive letters of instruction when there's a direction for a QBAS assessment. A QBAS report is a fully coherent document which assists in determining the most appropriate ways forward without undue delay. There are no numerically based formula, no graphs, charts or percentages, just simple color coded indications of findings and the evidence for them. QBAS joint assessment reports always include analysis of each parent individually and in combination to enable comparison and inform individual and joint analysis of risk and needs. QBAS makes very clear in which aspects of care one parent's profile exacerbates risk or reduces risk. And this approach to analysis means that in the event parents later separate, their individual capacity is fully understood. The report provides clear evidence of any residual risks and aspects of care for which services and support are still required. And where appropriate, reports propose focused, time-limited change and development work tailored for each parent. Importantly, QBIS assessments don't afford unlimited opportunities for parental growth and development. If improved safety is not indicated, the report makes this clear. The six elements come together to complete the CUBE, the QBAS assessment. The last two stages, facets five and six, the reports, are the ones you'll likely consider the most important to you. But for families, they can most readily identify with facets three and four. That's the real content from their perspective. And here's what a few parents tell us about their QBAS experience. They tell us that they were concerned about assessment, that they could, didn't think they could cope, and that they were really pleasantly surprised with the facilitation approaches and that they really better understood what their children need and how to meet those needs. Of course, the social workers undertaking the assessments must be fully trained in QBAS and its powerfully different approaches and to use the really helpful software and selections of facilitation tools to record information appropriately and analyze it and then to report comprehensively to the court. Here's what just a fraction of the social workers assessed and trained tell us about the training and the approaches used to engage and facilitate and assess so differently. So really QBAS parenting assessment tool is about helping social workers be better equipped at assessing parents. Is that right? Absolutely. And parents and social workers love it. 
Um, and social workers are actually excited to undertake assessments in this way. They can really feel it's a hugely important task done well again, and that families can truly get it and invest their energy in it, which is really refreshing for social workers. We all basically want to do a really good job and provide the best evidence. What about other professionals? Like <laughs> mega barristers like myself? Yeah, well, there's lots of feedback too. Importantly, um, there's a couple of uh, uh, encouraging testimonials here for you from a psychologist and um, a barrister. Um, we've lots of others. Um, and they, their sense is that um, it's very welcome and very, very different. And basically that QBAS couldn't have come soon enough. Um, not least because of the fully detailed court report, but also the differences um, in the way it approaches parents and how it helps parents understand. So the report covers most issues within letters of instruction. It's professionally presented. For joint, report, uh, joint reports, each parent is separately assessed and in combination and the report will provide clear evidence of residual risk and developmental needs. QBAS doesn't afford unlimited opportunities for parental growth if safety is not indicated. Um, and you'll see from um, anyone who's seen the reports that they really are a fully professional document um, that covers everything you need. The parent report, of course, um, which is facet six, is uh, specifically written for parents and it's tailored to each parent's individual needs. It simply and briefly explains the findings and the recommendations in a colour coded visual format. This report, as it's for the parents, is not submitted in evidence. The local authority are encouraged where necessary to consider translation or conversion of that report into an audio file for a parent if that's required. And the social worker and or the solicitor can agree on who is to share the report and when, so that parents really do fully understand. The parent report makes the findings and the recommendations especially clear. So, Parents are encouraged to think about what they need to evidence by way of changes. And they, um, the, the parent report has been very, very well received um, from professionals and parents across the board. I think that's right. I think part of the problem is that often we see in courts that social workers haven't shared the full uh, parenting assessment report it comes to a final hearing and parents suddenly realise, well, hang a second, I didn't realise that was um, <laughs> recommended for me. Mm -hmm. And so this really does help parents understand what is expected of them rather than six months down the line in meeting their barrister, having had the report sent to them by their solicitor, who isn't social work trained and it's not a criticism of them. Um, it's sometimes really helpful just to have that at the outset for the parents so that they need to know that they know what they uh, they need to work on so that's absolutely. absolutely it's very welcome from my point of view yeah they they really are very well received um and it, it is very important that the findings and the recommendations are shared with parents and sensitively because often if the recommendations and findings aren't as they'd hoped they're going to be um, very disappointed, of course, but what's always important to parents is that they understand what they need to do next and that everything's clear to them. So the demand for QBAS has very quickly escalated beyond our expectations. And this is because QBAS is so much more of an assessment. It's not the equivalent of anything. It's not based on anything other than what works most effectively it really is a fully value added assessment, covers everything from the most basic of concerns um, to the most complex, such as fetal alcohol syndrome, factitious illness, um, parental alienation, um, 
everything that you can possibly think of from ADHD to alcohol dependency, self-harm to sensory deprivation, to name but a few. So what about timescales? <laughs> a, a question that we're usually asked. Well, we know that you guys always want them in a huge hurry. Typically, it would take a trained and licensed QBAS assessor six to eight weeks from outset to undertake um, a comprehensive and really robust QBAS assessment. Sessions would take place at an agreed venue, at agreed intervals, either at the parent's home or somewhere else as appropriate. They would include um, observations and individual and joint sessions. Now, as a vastly improved assessment model and reporting process, some additional hours are naturally required for assessment to ensure the depth and the quality of evidence demanded and to aid the most appropriate and timely decision-making possible for every child. So some moderate additional costs are frequently offset by the additional insights achieved and by robust conclusive reports that enable more timely findings and assist everyone in making suitable plans. How many sessions are usually needed for a parent, for example, with a learning difficulty? Well, we would recommend six to eight sessions for any parent. Um, and obviously the upper end of that scale, if there are really marked difficulties, just to afford them absolutely every opportunity to um, develop through the process and to provide the best information they can for the assessor. Um, and that would include some observations also. So it's not overly lengthy, but it's enough to ensure the depth and breadth of evidence you really need and to give every parent the best opportunity to to do their best for the process. Um, and in terms of the hourly, in the number of hours, um, it's obviously dependent on the particular expert, but as a ballpark figure, how many hours would, be, uh, would you be looking at? Yeah, we, we issue assessors um, with a, an approximate guide to the hours that they will need to undertake a really robust assessment in this way. And you'd be looking probably at 60 hours for a single assessment. And depending on the circumstances, approximately 15 more if it's a joint assessment. So it's quite a significant assessment in terms of hours. In terms of the fees applied, they will depend on your chosen um, assessor. They would generally apply their own hourly rate to the, the guide in regard to hours. Because we all know that the legal aid agency, for example, say 33 pounds for social work, independent social work assessment mm. um, inside London and 30 pounds outside. And those fees have been in place since 2014. Um, and of course, with uh, PAMS assessments, for example, or, um, there is a number of hours, I think it's 50 hours that are allowed. So you're not going too far beyond that, are you? They're not, they're not too far beyond at all. And given the additional information um, and insight that a QBAS assessment affords, you could very well argue that that's extra hours extremely well spent um, with the, the likelihood that it will cut short other processes that often delay plans for children so you know it's a an additional expense for a, a very clear and um and beneficial gain in terms of time and well looking at um who pays the costs obviously um, and it won't come as a surprise to some of you that I'd be asking if I were for a parent that the lo local authority bears the cost of it because it's such an important piece of work and it's a necessary piece of work that they need to be doing in assessing a parent. Um, but where costs are shared, um, there are a number of ways around that with either the local authority footing the shortfall or obtaining prior authority, which unfortunately we all know takes a, a lot longer 
Um, so those are routes that we can get assessments paid for. Um, any other bright ideas, Jerry? Um, well, we have issued um, a leaflet, which we hope to circulate um, among you in due course for those that would like it, which relates specifically to part 25 applications. Um, and it provides some really useful information about QBAS um, to assist those applications. Um, so, yes, I mean, that is really rather beyond our control as to what the legal aid agency will and won't fund. But um, increasingly, it's recognised as a far more robust process. So um, over to you guys, really, to make that, um, that difference count. So where can we find QBUS trained parenting assessors to take on our, okay. our work? Well, the integrity of every assessment is obviously really important to us. So QBAS assessors have to be face-to-face -face trained in its application. Um, they're trained personally by myself and Claire Chamberlain to really connect with parents um, and to make the uh, um, facilitation processes really meaningful and to work with them in ways that are appropriate and that complement their needs. So if they're trained to facilitate and explore and explain and really test potential for change, we know that each assessment will be a far better one. So Cubus is for every parent, as I've said, but it's not necessarily for every social worker. Cubus licensing requires a minimum of three years post-qualifying experience. Um, and registration with Social Work England or the um, equivalent in Scotland or Ireland and Wales. Also, completion of the comprehensive training. QBAS license holders are required to provide their license number and their training date on every report. And this is linked to their electronic signature on QBAS's system. So QBAS assessments are verifiable on request. Now, be sure to ask if your expert of choice is trained and licensed in QBAS, because if they are, they'll be able to provide you with these details. No party has consent to use QBAS report formats or the facilitation processes without having been trained and issued a license. There's no such thing as a QBAS style or a QBAS based assessment, only a fully robust, complete QBAS process and fully verifiable QBAS report. Now, as the real value of the model is, um, is now far more widely recognised, the need for more trained and social workers is escalating fast. We've added more training and licensing courses to meet the demand, and these take place over two fully packed days face to face. QBAS licensing and training is affordable and easily accessible and highly cost effective for local authority staff, independent social workers and agency social workers alike. And we've made it affordable in the interest of sharing best practice and promoting improved outcomes for children and their families. Anyone suitably qualified and motivated towards best practice can contact us to secure a place for training and licensing the dates and venues and costs are available on our website um, and you can contact us via info at qbas.co.uk to establish whether the expert you would normally approach for assessments is trained and licensed. Does that answer your question with regard to how you find one, Rachel? Yes, and I think that's the email address that you would email if you want a copy of these slides and also a copy um, of the leaflet that Jerry has referred to. Mm. Um, so overall, um, some key messages from you, Jerry. Okay. Um, in summary, we want you to take away a few key messages. One, that QBAS goes far further. QBAS achieves the most robust and conclusive social work evidence available. It can be applied at any stage. It's fully adaptable and tailored to each parent. 
QBES, importantly, and in sharp contrast, keeps pace with current issues affecting parents and children. It routinely in, um, involves the, uh, addresses the vast majority of questions within letters of instruction. There are no numerically based assessment formulas or algorithms doing the assessment for you. There are no graphs, charts, or percentages to worry about. And QBAS provides that very simplified, tailored parent report. And training and licensing, uh, licensing is affordable and accessible for local authorities and independents and agencies. So those key messages, hopefully, um, will assist you all in deciding whether it's the QBAS assessment you need and whether your assessor is QBAS trained. That's great. Thank you very much, Jerry. Now, we've had a couple of questions on um, the chat box. The first one comes from Ruth, and she says, it all sounds similar to family safeguarding approach. How does this differ? Um, there, are, there are some similarities to the safeguarding approach, but QBAS goes far further. Um, what social workers really need to understand about families um, is, is really facilitated through the process of the assessment. It's supported by really intelligent software that assists them to ask the right questions in the right way, um, in the right format to get the best information. So in terms of signs of safety and colour coding things in terms of risk, yes, there's similarities. Um, I would say that QBAS incorporates, um, you know, similar thinking, but it is in no way replicating um, signs of safety. It's, it's an entirely standalone process um, as an assessment and it doesn't require um, application of signs of safety approaches um, separately either. Right. There's another question in relation to um, costs being routinely borne by local authorities. Mm -hmm. And the question really is about how savings can be evidenced. Well, yes, in, in time, we will be able to produce um, some, some data regarding this. Anecdotally, what we can see at the moment is that where QBAS assessments have been applied, um, there is less frequency for um, contested hearings, but this is small scale um, anecdotal evidence at the moment. But the, the greater feedback we have regarding outcomes in cases involving QBAS, the better we can accumulate evidence that helps us demonstrate cost savings. Of course, local authorities training their own staff to undertake QBAS assessments rather than have them commissioned out is an obvious saving. Um, but in terms of time and outcomes, we need longer term um, evidence to, to firmly um, provide evidence of them taking less time and having um, you know, less contested outcomes. But this anecdotally, that's what we're seeing. And I think also because the report is so comprehensive, the need to come back and have an addendum because whoops, you've forgotten to address this or whoops, we forgot to ask you about this. Uh, it, the, the necessity of addendum reports are significantly reduced, I would have thought. Yeah, very much so. Um, and, and because the report format, which is, um, you know, as I say, it's based on many years of, of, of experience of reporting um, to the court, because the format really cues the assessor to consider everything, um, and, you know, including, you know, sibling relationships, including if the parents were to separate, including, um, you know, contact considerations, etc. You know, everything you need is in the, the first report if it's relevant it's in there um a couple of questions about how to um whether sorry how to contact you um which you've provided already yeah. and um 
would you directly contact Cubus to make an inquiry in relation to a potential assessment? I think you've answered that within. Um, can you provide a list of licensed assessors? Yes, we can on request. We certainly can do that. Um, we would helpfully um, ask that you provide us with the location that you are um, wanting assessors in because that helps us provide you with the most appropriate list um, so that we're not inundating you. We do also, of course, need their permission to share that information with you. So those that have agreed to us sharing that information, um, we can provide you lists of. Great. Um, how many assessments have been undertaken to date? I guess I think you can only answer from your own perspective, um, because if you've licensed others to do it, you ne not necessarily get that feedback. So how how many have have you done? Well, you're right. We can't answer for how many other people um, have assessed, of course. Um, I've done, uh, I don't know how many hundreds <laughs> um, of assessments using QBAS, um, both, you know, before it became um, accessible to everyone else because we tested it so fully and, of course, since. Um, when other people are um, assessing using QBAS, it's important to note that we aren't agents for them. We don't quality assure their work. We don't actually commission them um, on our behalf to do the work, you would um, contact them directly just as you do um, anyone else. So yes, they're under no obligation whatsoever to share with us how many they're, um, they're using, but we do know that it's increasingly in demand and that is um, only very reassuring to us because it's reinforcing um, how much better a model it is. Um, a question in relation to any review from any local authority that have used QBAS? No formal review as yet. Don't forget this was only really launched in August um, um, for uh, other people to, um, to be um, reviewing. So um, there is no formal review, but in due course, when there are um, additional numbers other than those completed by Claire and myself, um, when we know more about the other um, assessors and their numbers then we would welcome that process of course and I do know you're very popular with one local authority um, so um, a question in relation to the parent report um, when you file your report with the court will you file the parent report as well or is that available on request or the, the question is that this person, uh, sorry, Stephen, sorry, Stephen, um, is conscious that there are two reports and some parties may prefer both reports to be submitted as evidence. Well, the, uh, we're happy to uh, leave that for case by case decision because in some areas, the court don't want to see those um, reports in the bundle since they're written for the parent and in others they may do. So it can be decided on a case by case basis um, determined by what's the best, um, you know, what's the best advice for each family. And um, there's a question about a draft letter of instruction with e questions to experts available for legal representatives to help in drafting part 25 applications. I think what you said earlier is that you don't need a very lengthy um, letter of instruction because your QBAS assessment just covers all yeah. aspects and the tool doesn't allow you to move on unless you've answered particular questions. Is that right? Um, well, yes, the, the structure of the report is such that it would cue the assessor to fully uh, address all those issues that would normally be involved in a comprehensive letter of instruction. Many of them are, are standard, as we know, and that's, you know, that's routinely incorporated, of course, but so are all those extra things I referred to. Um, so the assessor then is at liberty to, uh, to edit those things. If they're not applicable in that situation, they, they simply edit those considerations out of the report. So there is um, liberty for the um, assessor to determine what's appropriate for each case. It's not going to ask you to address something regarding sibling assessments if you know and sibling attachments if it's not a consideration. Um, 
but your letters of instruction need really generally only um, request a QBAS assessment. And you could do that safe in the knowledge that it, and unless it's something really left of field, it would be routinely incorporated in the report. Um, a question in relation to reductions for ISWs, because this person doesn't have recourse to LA funds, um, presumably contact you and you'll deal with? We'll try to. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, I'm not sure whether this is a question you can answer. Um, can a heavily redacted assessment template be shared as it would assist to see the format? Uh, yes, it can, and it has been. Um, CAFCAS have some, of course, um, and there are some in circulation. Depending on um, where they're requested from, we can arrange that. Um, however, it's important to say that um, heavily redacted um, reports will obviously contain a lot of missing information that, that would make them much harder to understand, but the format um, would probably assist, yeah. Um, sibling assessments. Mm. Do you think that this will be comprehensive enough to obviate the need for a together or a part assessment? Um, well, let's be clear that QBAS isn't intended to address um, together or apart um, in full. What QBAS includes is consideration of sibling relationships, and there are tools built into the um, online tools library that help assessors really carefully measure those relationships so that they can comment on them. I wouldn't suggest it's necessarily a full replacement for uh, a together or a part assessment, but it would certainly give a good indication of whether further assessment um, using together or apart is required. So it's not intended to substitute really, it's intended to complement. Okay, and so I'm just reading. Thank you very much, everyone, for your questions. All excellent. Um, trying to work my way around this one. Um, this person has asked about how the information is gathered and input to create the report. Are there prompts or an outline plan drop down menu that the social worker completes? And how is it done without a plan of work? Surely not one size fits all. What happens if it's a factitious or induced illness? Oh, Sorry, how, how many questions was that? <laughs> um, so can I say first of all about the software? So the software guides the assessor through a process of, of robust assessment. Um, with some very key questions. And as we know, as you guys know better than most, it's the questions and the way they're put that gets you the best information. So the questions are tailored to suit each situation, but they're also adapted when necessary to, to suit anyone with a, um, additional learning needs. And the information is then recorded very briefly and succinctly within the software sufficient to help the assessor to rate the risk in that particular aspect that they're assessing. Um, and it sounds like the person asking the questions really needs to come and find out more about the whole process and, and to, to train in, in its full application, because it's really impossible to condense a two day training course about how to use QBAS into um, a short answer to a question, but um, it, it's very it's very carefully and evidentially recorded to help you to determine risk and need and what support might assist. Um, and then the the risk ratings are generated for the report, and the full analysis then goes into the report um, via a lot of cutting and pasting and expanding um, and it's done very coherently and fully, as anyone who's read a full report will know. And um, can QBAS assessments be used in the PLO process or um, children need interventions? 
Yes, absolutely. You can apply Cubis at any stage of local authority intervention, and it's it's increasingly used for pre-birth assessments and in pre-proceedings. And are the local authorities that you're aware of using it internally or commissioning ISWs to do that work? They're commissioning ISWs to do the work currently. Presumably because not enough are trained in the QBAS. Um, not enough are trained in QBAS, but I think also it's because sometimes there are stability issues in staff groups in local authorities and, you know, QBAS is an investment in their staff and they would want to ensure that their staff, you know, that they've got enough permanent staff, if you like, um, that their investment is, is well spent. Um, so for, the, for agencies with a very high turnover of staff and agent, uh, sorry, local authorities with a very high turnover of staff or huge numbers of agency staff, you know, they would want to look very carefully at that. We perfectly understand that. But that's why there's such a demand for independence at the moment. And then we've got one question about how it would work where interpreters are required. Um, it, it works fine where interpreters are required. Um, it's, it's obviously um, a more skillful task for the assessor, but because a lot of the materials are um, using visual images um, and the questions would need to be interpreted exactly by the interpreter, um, then we obviously make that very clear at outset, but it does work um, very well because they can relate to the materials regardless of language. Brilliant. Well, we haven't had any further questions and it's sort of five to six. So with that, I'm going to thank everybody for attending. Um, thank you very much, Jerry, and thank you, Claire, who we can't see on screen but we know we know you're there <laughs> so thank you very much and again thank you so much for everyone joining i hope that has enlightened you on the qbas style uh, or qbas parenting ass uh, assessments um and um hope to see you all soon thank you bye bye